first of all, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your caring role, please? Yes, my husband, who was only 53 at the time, back in January, suffered a very serious stroke. Um, out of the blue, he was fine one day, and the next day he was in hospital, in intensive care, having had a stroke. Um, when he first sort of came round after it, which was over the next couple of days, um, he couldn't move at all down his left-hand side. Uh, when he came home from hospital, the fun really started, because I suddenly found I was a very full-time carer for someone who was still pretty paralysed. Eight months on, which we now are, uh, he is hugely better. He's done a vast amount of physio and uh, he can now walk. He's just ditched his stick so he can now walk without a stick. Um, he still can't do much with his left hand and arm, so I'm still needed to do quite a bit of caring for him. But uh, I've been lucky in that, in my case, the caring responsibility has eased over the last eight months. But I know for an awful lot of people, that doesn't ease, and it goes on and on. So I feel I've come through having been a full-time 100% carer to now just someone who helps with things like tying shoelaces, which he still can't do, doing up shirt buttons, which he still can't do. But apart from that, he's now pretty independent. What do you think has been the biggest single change to your life? Since, since the stroke? For my life, not mm. being able to call your time your own. So when my husband wants to get up, he can only get up if I'm there. So if I wanted to lie in one morning after a late night, that wouldn't really be possible because otherwise he's stranded in bed because he can't get up, and get all his shoes on and so on without some help. Uh, so I suppose in that sense, it's, it's almost like going back to having children. You suddenly have to think of someone else's needs all the time as well as your own. You can't just sleep in when you want. You can't stay up late when you want. You have to be there thinking, he might need a hand with this, he might need a hand with that. And certainly in the early days, it was every meal, it was helping him through the shower. Um, it was everything. Was it emotionally, was it a strain? Yes, it was a terrible shock because it came out of nowhere um, and there was this sense that what were our lives going to be like from now on. At first he was literally bed bound and I thought is this going to be the rest of our lives now? He's only 53, mm. hopefully has many years left but is he always going to be bed bound? And then as time went on and the physio was helping and he did improve, luckily, uh, it was always a question, well, how much will he improve? How much will I always need to be around now? Or how much will he be able to become fully independent again? And as I say, in my case, we were very lucky in that the physio worked well. He was very determined. He stuck at it. And so my caring role has now diminished a lot. What's been the biggest frustration? Shoes. I come back to shoes. <laughs> because he's still doing a lot of physio and because he's now back at work, he needs to change his shoes quite a lot. So some days I feel I'm changing shoes three times a day and trying to do up shoelaces. Um, I say shoes and shirts, I would say. And the best thing about caring? The best thing, I think, in some senses, it's brought us closer together because we have spent more time together than when we were both working flat out. Um... And you learn to appreciate things that perhaps you didn't appreciate before. It was interesting because when the stroke first happened, I was myself not well. I've managed to have a fall and I broke one ankle in five places and I broke a bone in the other foot. So I was on crutches and still limping quite badly in the early days. In terms of the professionals, they were quite good to me. They took on board that my role was suddenly changing and that especially as I was invalid myself at the time, which of course a lot of carers are, especially amongst the elderly carers, um, people did appreciate that I had quite a lot to cope with and did their best to help. But at the end of the day, once you're out of hospital, it's very much you and your, your loved one left on your own and there isn't much support once you come out of hospital. Quite often people are plunged into the caring role at short notice, not knowing that it's coming, not knowing what to expect. And there is a lot more that could be done, I think, to help carers, to make them realise that these things are available to help, these mechanical devices can help, and also to realise that you do need to look after your own health as well. I think it's actually vital as support for carers, because so often you feel guilty even 
expecting any help from anyone because you normally have your full health and, and the person you're looking after doesn't. So you feel guilty saying, I need some help as well. But actually carers do need help because suddenly their lives have been turned upside down in the same way as their, their loved ones have. Uh, and it can be very full-time and very demanding. I think the most important thing, if you can do it, and it's a big if, is to get a break, to make sure you can sometimes just get a break and have some time away, because what's strange about caring is suddenly your life is not your own anymore. You're entirely bound up with the life of the person you're caring for. And I think it's essential to retain your sense of self, that you do take some time out and get other people to come and give you a break, either help from family or indeed from organisations such as the carers' organisations. It's absolutely essential. I think if there was a more joined-up approach and people coming out of hospital, coming into a caring role, could feel that everyone was working together to support them rather than having to find out everything individually by yourself, I think a lot more could be done to make carers' lives easier. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure.